Facebook. What's her name? Hello? Hey, Puck, what's your mom's name? Hello? Hi? Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Okay, hang on one second. Can she hear us, though? Is Alex here? Alex, you there? Okay, can you hear them, Mom? Hello? Hello. Okay, they can hear you. Hi? Hello? Hello, Mrs. Mrs. Puck. I can hear you. I can see it. I can see Axel sitting there in the corner. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, Axel, do you want to conduct the interview? What? I wasn't even prepared for this, but okay. Um, hello, that Mrs. Makes Puck. It even better. How are you doing today? I am doing great. How are you? I am fantastic. Um, how how, how do you feel about StarCraft 2 as a game? For me? Huh? What did you say? I can't hear you. I how do you feel as talking. Star I hear you talking. Sorry. How do you feel as StarCraft 2 as a game? Okay, what, what did you say? I'm sorry. How much do you know about StarCraft 2? I don't, I don't really have a clue oh. about anything about the game. I just enjoy watching it. I understand bits and pieces of it, I guess. But, it's just fun to watch. And you get to know the names of the players. And do you have a favorite player? Besides your son? Uh, besides your son? Besides my son? Uh-huh. Oh... Ax I like Axel uh, Nathan, and I like uh, Fitzy. Truby. And, and Ruby, sure. Of course. Truby. Yes! Do you yes. have a favorite... Awesome. Do you have a favorite caster? Axel? Axel? Especially when he eats a bowl of mustard? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, that's the yes. Thank that you. That was pretty fun. Did so you... I have a question. Okay, go ahead, Cats. Yeah. Mrs. Puck, uh, you and your husband went to the last MLG with Root Puck shirts. That's pretty awesome. Did yes. you enjoy the event? Yes, we did wear the Puck shirts. And I have my Puck shirt with me my, this weekend when I'm at my sister. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Anyone have questions? Come on. Um, um, did you, uh, have you, uh, what type of games have you are, you, are you a game player? Not necessarily video games. Are you like a board gamer or do you have any favorite <laughs> games or anything? No, I don't. I, I play solitary and that's about it, I guess. <laughs> I, I just, no, I don't really play video games. Uh-uh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's your, age, what's your APM, do you think, in StarCraft 2? Oh. That's a bad question. Bad question. How many clicks per minute do you think you could do? Have you seen Have you seen uh, your son play like in in real life in first person? He's he's pretty fast. That's what That's what Katz is asking. How fast would you play? Oh, you're so close me now, and I'm so sorry. Oh. It's okay. It wasn't a very good question. Um. <laughs> It was pretty bad. Now, Puck on his stream has been known to take off his shirt. Um, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about his uh, his decisions to remove clothing while streaming? About his decision to do what, sir? To remove clothing while streaming. Oh, I don't think so. I've never seen that, so I don't think he does that. <laughs> I've never seen him without his shirt on on the stream. Okay. Um, well, he said he's on record that if we get to 2,000 viewers on this stream, that he will remove his shirt and. Uh... If, he, if he gets 2,000 viewers on the stream, he can take his shirt off. There's nothing wrong with. Will, will awesome. you ground? Will you ground him if he does that? She said so there's little, nothing wrong with it. Little yeah. Inappropriate. Okay. I'm, okay. I think it's fine. Okay. Um. Drewby, ask a question. Does anyone have questions in the chat? I in the chat. or tweet at Axel Tosh. That would be, that would be good. Yeah. My mind is blank. Um. What, what do you hope for Puck to accomplish in StarCraft Two as a gamer? I hope that he places in a in a MLG tournament and um, he continues to improve. That's a good. That's question. a really good answer. Yeah. Yeah. You're a very supportive mom. 
and uh, right, yeah, I admire that. Thank you. Yeah. I've got support of sisters and brothers, you know, a brother and a brother-in-law who are totally committed to watching his games every evening. Wow. So yeah. I, have, I have a question along along that. Um, okay. For me personally, um, it's relatively hard for me to talk to my family about what I do. Um, h how difficult is it to talk about uh, your son's hobby as far as uh, playing video games professionally? Uh, like in talking to your family. Or... Go ahead. I'm proud of him. Very proud of him. Cool. That's pretty cool. Where are you at right now? Me? Yes, you. Uh, I'm at my dad's house in Houston, Texas. In Houston, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Already. Yeah, me and Katz are actually in Peru right now. Okay. Uh, That's why you can't hear us because our internet is kind of bad. I generally, I, I am a full-time student right now at uh, a university, so it's, it's it's summer right now. Um, what are you majoring in? Uh, I'm majoring in communication and I'm minoring in journalism. Already? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we sure enjoy listening to you during the streams and stuff when you're when you're doing your casting and that. So we're it's fun to listen to you. So. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Keep up the good work. Keep up the good work. I will. I'll try. No, I'll try. I'm not real familiar with your playing, but I see you're a rank 65 and. Um, I don't play as much as I would like to. <laughs> I'm too busy. But <laughs> I have a 500 bonus pool. That's my defense. Okay. I, I see your name up in the right hand corner there. Yeah. yeah. I'm really good at the game. That's all you really need to take away from that. Um, all right. Good for you. All right. Any <laughs> other questions, uh, Cats or uh, Truby? Puck, do you have any no, questions for your mom? Oh yeah, Puck. Oh. Yeah, Puck. Um, is he going to play now pretty soon, Puck, or not tonight? I'll probably play some whenever yeah, this okay. thing ends, so. Alrighty. Alrighty, thank you. Alright, well, thank you so much You're for awesome. coming on. Yes, um, thank you You're an much. inspiration to to many people out there, and keep doing what you're doing. It's okay, awesome. Thank you. Yes, my mom's going to Weed Fest. Yes, I am going to Weed Fest. Yep. Alright, bye. Bye, Pooks Mom. Bye. Bye. Alright. Awesome. That was interesting. Your mom is Wait, pretty lofty. Who won the last game so I can adjust the score? <laughs> my mom's pretty awesome. Did Masa yeah. win or TT1 win? TT1. Um, TT1 oh, TT1 against Vibe. Okay, the circle. Oh, the circle. Alright, so score is Masa 7 5, Vibe 4 6, TT1 5 5. Okay, that was funny. Do you Someone want... asked if your mom has a Twitter. <laughs> no, she doesn't. No, she Seeing see that she just insults insult Skype for the call, or... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Massa doesn't have a fucking Twitter. <laughs> what? I did it until I joined Roop. Yeah. Myself. What's your Twitter book? Root Puck. Awesome. Yeah, bro. All right, I will uh, mute my microphone. Have fun, guys. I'm gonna AFK again, and I promise I'll stop AFKing after this one. All right, so Sounds good. cats puck, have fun. Cats puck, we get this. Oh yeah. And uh, cats, you're gonna be observing. Okay. So or, Juby, uh, wait, Juby, do you yeah. want to observe? I could let Juby observe if you want. Juby, do you want to observe? He said no. Okay, cats, you're observing. Have fun. So we have root vibe here in the top, in the bottom left corner, and in the top right corner, we have root TT1. So far, it's the circle of life, basically, with Massa edging out a couple of wins here and there. But basically, what's been going on all day is TT1 beats Massa, vibe beats TT1, Massa beats vibe. Um, still, as I said, Massa has won a couple more times than the other two. Um, because he beat TT1 uh, a couple times. So, uh, Massa is still ahead in the scoreboard. I'm not exactly sure what that's looking like, but I think he's something like two wins ahead of the other two. And, uh, yeah, we're going to see what happens here. This is a pretty cert map uh, for CBP. As far as stats go, 
Uh, I think it's the highest win percentage for Zerg versus Protoss out of any map in any map pool. What are your thoughts on this map, Pook? Um, it's terrible. It's it's I... it's really awkward. Like whenever you have to take a third as Protoss on the low ground, it just feels really weird to me personally. Mm -hmm. So. And then the wall off at the natural is yeah. very vulnerable to baning busts. Always. Oh. It's really yeah. awkward to make the wall here. Let's see what you're saying. So do you think Zerg players should be more aggressive on this map, uh, more so than other maps? I figure it's a problem uh, to um, have it's on the low ground because of things like force fields and stuff like that. It doesn't give you much I time mean, to act, right? It, it, it really depends. Like, If you don't take down the rocks, at the third base, like maybe with a couple of lanes, you could just leave them there all game. If you don't do that, then it can be still kind of hard because you can still do a decent wall at your third on like on any map. But if you break down those rocks, you can easily just like do like a three prong attack almost or two prong, and it's like almost impossible to hold as Protoss your third. Interesting. And yeah. uh, we see TT1 actually going for a cannon rush here, or potentially going for a cannon rush, I should say. Um, he might not go through with it just because Vive scouted it, and Vive is actually transferring three drones. I would actually like to see a few more, um, but TT1 may not actually go for the cannon rush. Oh, there's a cannon, and if he drops one more, these three drones are actually not going to be enough to stop it. Thoughts there's before? four drones. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, this cannon's going to be nice. nice. Yep, you need but at least three drones to stop the At the same cannon. time, it's going to be only one cannon. Yeah, so, yeah, those spines are going to be more than enough. So, um, yeah, and TT1 this... will yeah, probably cancel that and adding another cannon now. Yeah, but that cannon's going to be too late, I feel. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the spines will be done right about at the same time as that cannon. And with the queen popping out, um, Vive should be able to hold this. So after that, Vive should be in a decent spot, but the difference is not going to be too huge. I honestly um, don't even find can cannon rushing beneficial anymore, unless you make three cannons, because half the time you're not even going to kill the hatchery, you only make two. Yeah, the thing is, if instead of making that uh, gateway, he would have made a second cannon, it would have been impossible for uh, yeah. for TT1 to, uh, for uh, Vive to stop it, I think, or to stop either one oh, of the definitely. cannons. So, uh, yeah, Ooh, I think the gateway was not... a bit of a mistake. Oh, Vibe's not target firing. No, he target is. Fire. He's still gonna get it. Yeah, it's really close, though. It's more close than it should have been. Yeah, definitely. He wasn't really attacking the same cannon with both spines, which is a mistake. Yeah. But as is, um, Vibe is gonna be in a, in a good situation. However, making those spines early on is gonna make it so that he can't get that third queen right away. And he's also supply blocked right now. So uh, yeah. he could definitely be doing a little I, bit better. I feel like it was kind of an equal trade, though. I mean, Vibe kind of messed up his micro, and <coughs> fun, like he's still delayed like his tech. So like now Vibe knows his cyber's gonna be late. He's safe for quite a while. Like he's just starting warp gate right now. Mhm. Mm definitely. Um, he did get ahead in the economy, however. He got a bunch of har harvesters out, so he has a. Tang Harvester lead, but that's very deceiving because once the injects and the drones start popping out, everything yeah. will stabilize. And like you said, his tech is uh, pretty far behind. So, yeah. Oh, that's a really fast, sneaky Nexus. I, I really like it though because what Vibe is thinking right now is that his tech's not going to come. He can't really pressure the natural. And he has nothing to scout it with. So, I mean, this third is actually really safe. Yeah, besides, uh, Vive also like got supply blocked, like I mentioned before, and his queen is just, just popped out, and with all that larva, like the only thing that makes sense for Zerg is uh, to make drones 9 times out of 10. So, yeah, yeah. like you said, this is, this is a pretty smart choice by TT1. The only thing is if it gets scouted, say by these two Zerglings, oh, I think he's gonna scout him, oh! oh. Yeah, but it'd be too late to scout it anyways. He already has like a cannon almost down. Yeah, his warp gate's gonna be down. He's gonna throw down some gateways here pretty soon. By the time that actual army got there, TT1 it would be ready. It would be too too late to scout it uh, as far as applying any pressure goes.
But if he scouted it, he wouldn't have to make any roaches once uh -huh. that roach warns up, and he could take a fourth. Yeah, that's so, uh, really true. Yeah, so I I I, I would have liked for him to scout it to see what he would have done. He 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 could be taking more gases and, and whatnot. Uh, he's still gonna do that though. So. I like that he's using the spine to break rocks. Spines are actually pretty good at breaking rocks, and most herd units are shit at it. So yeah, uh, yeah. I do that on Tolerim a lot. Oh, I didn't know that spine colors actually did more damage for armor. Yeah, they're pretty. Pretty good unit. And down so, the rocks. Oops. Looks like it's just gonna go into a normal game from here. Yep, for Probably. the most part. Vive already with a macro hatch, judging by the number of sentries. Um, it's really hard to tell. Like, why do you think he made that many sentries? Do you think it was necessary? Um, or well, is it just part of his game of composition? He he didn't really scout. Um, five for quite a while, so he doesn't. He's kind of in the blind, and the fact about it is, he doesn't even know if five scouted the third. So, because overlord placements and all that, so he's just playing safe right now. Until yeah, but at the same time, he had those sentries trapped in his natural, though. Then you think that five could have done a bunch of damage to the third? Um, I don't know. There's only one cannon. And those units were isolated. Now he's TT1 is pumping out immortals and getting a robotic spade to go into Colossus production, and uh, yeah. I really like that. Uh, this is a pretty choky map. Um, I think Colossi are pretty pretty strong on it. Yeah, I feel like he's just gonna do some kind of three base timing and try to end up before Brood Lords because yeah. PMR always hates late game PVC. It seems like uh, that's that's what it looks like. But actually, Pym is is. Uh, really known for aggressively expanding and, and going for macro games for the most part. We haven't seen it much in this series, though. So. Yeah. Mostly because Vive is also very aggressive. Uh, so this is a really weird decision since he doesn't have a forward pylon. But he's just gonna back away, so it's okay. I yeah, I love that. Um, yeah, if if you look at the unit production right now, Vive, he forced out 13 roaches from Vive and two and two lings, uh, moving out at in the map is, is, is just really nice by Protoss. And I would also, like, a lot of Protoss don't do this enough, but the Zerg is always going to be looking for a probe with it. So you should always take a fake probe with it um, if you're going to do fake pushes. Yeah. Because otherwise the the, the, the Zerg, like, if he if he, if he has, like, good scouting and, and, you know, he has looked around for pylons and sees, sees no probe, it's like, oh, that's just a fake attack. But if you take a probe with it, you, the Zerg has to start making a bunch of units. And uh, roaches and lings are usually not what you want to have in the late game. Yeah, that's really true. And, um, yeah, I, I feel like TT1 might have a slight advantage uh, going into the late game here. Oh, I don't know if I like this such late of Mutalisk from Vibe. Yeah, uh, TT1 kinda... already has cannons in his main. Yeah, and, uh... and he should have. Does he have blink? Yeah, yeah he does have blink. So, maybe it's just to, like press mineral lines a little bit because it's. I don't think he's gonna make much more than this. Like, he's going straight into investors from here. Yeah, also making 16 drones at once, and that might be the worst time to get him. Uh, I think TT1 is gonna be pushing here, and Vibe is maxed actually. These mutas are gonna do little to nothing, and uh, they're pretty useless in, in small numbers like this uh, against an army, uh, Protoss army. Yeah. Oh, Roaches are gonna get caught up position. Force shields go down. No, no force shields. That's uh, weird. Uh, he could have had all those Roaches for free. He's throwing on a ton of spines, too. Yeah, I, I do like the counterattack a lot here. And uh, he is probably he gonna be able to get this base. Uh, I don't think so. There's uh, already I zealots. I, I think this is a huge mistake by TT1 to pull back to defend this base, and uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, TT1 could have just almost ended the game there, and uh, if that's it why it's also really nice to have like a dark shrine. You don't even like have to utilize it to do harassment. Uh -huh. Like even defensively, like if Zerglings and Roaches come in, you can protect like almost every base. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Zerglings and Roaches are usually used because. You know, you're going to a late game and you don't want those units like I mentioned before. So when you see an opportunity to 
just trade a base for those units or, or, or anything like that, or you're threatened and you want to potentially, like, threaten a, a counterattack of your, of your own, like, you're usually not going to have an Overseer with your army because it's, yeah. it's kind of a snap pull. So, uh, yeah, I would really like DTs. And uh, TT1 is pushing forward. That's a ton of spine crawlers. Uh, DT Shrine actually going down just now. Um, that that is not a lot of infestors and no spine crawlers at the third. But TT1 seems to be going for the natural. This is a little bit of a mistake. And uh, yeah. look, fungals here. One fungal, be, looks, two fungals going down. It wouldn't have been so bad if you blinked half the units on the high ground, but. Mm -hmm. um, one thing about fungling that I I kind of disagreed here with is he fungled both groups of units, and he doesn't really have enough. Infestors to kill a, a, a like you know you need like four fungals or five to kill a, a large group of units. So if you only have five infestors, I think you should always try to focus on one chunk of units and try to take that down for free with fungals. Yeah. Riddler is now morphing, so he's going to be forfeiting this uh, third and almost inevitably losing the fourth as well. So Vive in a pretty oh, bad. Oh yeah, he'll lose the fourth. Yeah. But at the same time, he may be just trapping himself too. If his brood lords come out, but does he have enough infestors? Uh -oh. I don't think so. Uh, here it comes. It's gonna come down to the fungals. If he can get a few blinks uh, on the bottom of those infest on, on the bottom of those brood lords, it's gonna be game over. Beautiful fungal there, trapping most of those units yeah. uh, in the choke, and it's pretty much he gonna come to his engagement. He doesn't have enough stalkers. He he can't save this army. Yep. One more really nice fungal. Vive doing a great job of saving those roaches. And, uh, oh, needs another fungal there. Focus firing one of the birds. One more might go down. Yep, goes down. But, uh, Vibe now behind the bases, and he has to make a decision here. He has an army lead, so he can counterattack and hope for the best, and spend all of his money in a counterattack, or he can double but, it. Look how many probes CT1 has. Yeah, that's, that's pretty low. So, he, I've... like, CT1 did kill, uh, Vibe did kill a lot of probes. So there's like, there's expand, I like that. Yeah. I feel like Vibe's really far ahead right now, actually. Yeah, after clearing that army. Um he has a really nice unit composition. But the DTs, the DTs could kill the infestors, maybe. Oh, that's the last fungal he has. And it's not gonna be enough. So he has to wait a few more seconds for a second fungal. And uh yeah, he should pull back here once he realizes there's a DT shrine. He he Oh he and he missed the next fungal. Oh. He still has one more though. He gets that one. And one more. Last fungal going down, oh. and he's gonna take care of the DT. I don't think he should continue to push. He doesn't even have a burrow. And uh yep, he's gonna pull back. Great. He should just morph an overseer. I don't know why he hasn't yet. Yeah, but even if he did, I, I feel like playing it safe is the right call here and getting a, a, a more invincible army before pushing out. Because like yeah. you said, it's a head in economy. Uh, he cleared out a huge army. It's gonna be a while until TT1 can push out again, and just by threatening that counterattack, it's kind of like a, a position for Protoss, where they're kind of the Cirque shoes, and and uh, you know they they can't really go for those high tier high tech units, and they have to morph in stalkers and solids or die to that potential attack. So yeah, uh, that was a really nice call by Vive doing that fake attack, and uh, and now he's in a in a really 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 good spot. Yeah. Still kind of surprising though that there's still no overseer. Yeah, it's a little bit weird. I mean, he doesn't even have any spores down. Yeah, that's actually incredibly weird. Um, TT1 is completely unaware of this, but um, yeah, there's there's a spore at the third, which is probably the most likely base to get attacked, and he, I think TT1 sees it with the observer. Yeah. He knows about the spore, so he probably just uh, assumes. Just automatically assumes, yeah. yeah. Every other base, so he's even gonna try it. But yeah, that's that's definitely a mistake by Vibe. And if you ask him, like, if he lost the DTs and you ask him why he didn't make spores, I'm sure he, he would say, oh, I didn't make them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, now we have four base versus four base, soon to be five. And the supply is pretty close for PVC right now. Yeah, and definitely. The mothership's already out. I still yeah. feel like TT1 needs to be really careful about his army, so, like, he's. What is he doing? 
he's he's just uh, gonna try to harass and uh, yeah, but he's bringing Colossus with it. There he goes. Now the Colossus goes back. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a pretty small force of stalkers, but I think he can still snipe uh, something important <laughs> like perhaps this hive. Um, he unfortunately didn't find the Greater Spire. I'm not sure if he's aware of where that that's at, and I would have liked much rather seen the Greater Spire get sniped instead. And the recoil. Yeah. Oh, I... Pretty bad recoil. Yeah. Almost a waste there. Oh, and he still loses the Colossus. Oh no, Miss Rally. He does take a um, Infestor down with it to the grave. But uh, yeah, he I, didn't I really... do anything there. I really wish that once Pam didn't see the Greater Spire that he would just blink back down. Just because, like, all the tech that Vibe needs is already there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. TT1 Vision. He actually saw the Spire morphing, but he doesn't have Vision of the, of the Greater Spire. So unless he saw it and clicked it and remembered, oh, that's a Spire, then, uh... You know, he made the right call, but he, if he was aware that the Spire was there, he should have definitely gone for the Greater Spire instead. Yeah. Spires are really expensive. Yeah. Yeah, Greater Spires are pretty expensive and, and, and really time-consuming. Like, you, they, if they kill your Greater Spire, there's, like, you, you have to invest a lot of time as well as, as money into getting it back. And, um, yeah, I mean, the game's pretty much stabilized now. They, like, TT1 is actually hitting Harvesters um, by one. <laughs> oh, not anymore. Yeah. Now Vibe is ahead by five. But uh, it, it's, 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 a, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty tense game right now. It's, it's going to come down to that, to the Vortexes and the, and the Arkham Toilets and, you know, the Burglar Splits and the, and the Fungals. Yeah. I'm surprised he has this many Corruptors. I don't mind it at all. He's he's just gonna try to take the mothership first and uh, maybe force well, out guess, a, a vortex. I guess they're good off. for like, the Colossus too. So yeah, it's yeah. okay. Yeah, I I, I don't I, mind. I never I never make Colossus in PVC, so it's like Cerx usually never have any corruptors first me. Mm -hmm. uh, two double war prisms uh, going to vibe space. One gets taken down pretty easily, but the second one is gonna make all the way to uh, Vive's main and passed on to the Greater Spire, so I think he's gonna get the Greater Spire here. Dropping a few solids, uh, warping in, the War Prism's gonna fall down, oh! Those yeah. solids are instrumental, is, is that a word? To take it yeah. down the Spire. It's a good but, word. Uh, I like yeah, it. Yeah, it's a pretty sick word. Vive with a nice those... swarm, beautiful play. Um, that's that's really impressive that he was able to get a Night of Swarm while... while Ooh, was... those Colossus! Those Colossus! No! Oh, what are you doing, T? Uh, Vortex... Oh my god! That Vortex was so deceiving! <laughs> you see that Vortex? It looked like everything should have gone into it and nothing that did! Was, that was ridiculous, what I just saw. Was, what? Did you see that? I, I saw it. I'm pretty... I'm pretty mind blown right now. I'm pretty sure that Vortex should have hit, like, every single Bridler there. Um, Maybe it's just, like, one broken spot on this whole map. Yeah, yeah, that must be it. That little statue thing on the on the high ground or something. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I thought that Vortex was perfect, to be honest. That was weird. That but, was uh, the weirdest engagement in general, to be honest, from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was, like, something wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> but it was like, yeah. It was pretty funny. And, uh, wow, TT1 actually clearing this off. And, uh, yeah, well, the yeah, game stabilized one. Nice. It's, it, it's, it's gonna end soon, though. Look at the, look how much thing 5 has. Yeah. Definitely. Um, he was unable to warp in another uh, Nidus Worm, and he's gonna. TT one's gonna be able to clear this off. Um, Look at all those brood lords that just are morphing right now. TT one's still mining strong on two base, and uh, a third base still to uh, still to get mined out. I, I think he he still has a shot here. Vibe is actually yeah. on two base as well, 
And, but it's gonna uh, be it's yeah. gonna be really hard. Yeah, he doesn't have mothership, and he's gonna depend on Archon Stalker, which I have honestly be like a mass Infestor Broodlord with just Stalker Archon before. So, but you have to have yep. like a lot more Archons. Yeah, Archons are pretty good at pushing through Broodlings if you have enough of them, and um, yeah, and tanking so much damage. So, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty believable as long as there aren't like many DPS units down in the ground. Like uh, maybe like even roaches would help out a lot against archons. But yeah, yeah, it's just infestor Riddler is, uh, you know, archons with three armor don't do much, don't don't die as easily. TT one yeah. only has one armor and uh, three attack. So uh, he has yeah. two shields though. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and that's actually gonna benefit the the archons quite a lot. Yeah. Perhaps more so than than uh. Than oh yeah, def definitely, definitely. So uh, uh, yeah. But he can't engage this army yet. Mm -hmm. And T um, like, has all these. Oh, this is a Fitzy here stuff. That he's making a Nidus. That's gonna be a Nidus somewhere else. I I think Vibe could continue to push there. And uh, throwing infested turns on the high ground from the low ground, that would have been uh, really hard to stop for TT1. Yeah, TT1... the infested turns would take forever to get anywhere if you were to yeah. throw them from there, right? Um, they have a pretty long life spawn, and and they could have covered covered for the birdlords. Uh, okay. I don't know. I, I really like doing stuff like that sometimes. No, so, he's gonna. Um, it's yeah. all gonna come to his next engagement. Pook. Who do you think is gonna take it? It will. Um. Vibe. Vibe yeah, I think Vibe does have the better composition, but you know, one good vortex and uh, it's all over. The thing about it is, is I mean, Vibe, like TT1 can't save his fifth and fourth base. So now that Vibe has this high ground area, like front or Vibe's not really taking advantage of it though. Oh, vortex on every infester! Oh. <laughs> Weak. He has to run the Brutalords back or something. Um, all the links and Bane links almost running into the Vortex. And all the Brutalords actually running into it as well. This Archon Toilet is going to kill everything, Poop. Oh, not enough. Uh, I hope the Archons got in. Uh, nice I'm, kind of, I'm kind of really disappointed. I, because... I, I pass it. Does he really? Yeah. I think so. Uh, close. But yeah, it shouldn't yeah. have been this close. Like, the thing about it is, is if I would have just went to the ramp right away and spread out his units, there's no way that TT1 could have moved to the high ground. Yeah, and I think he figured he, that a little bit late. I mean, he, he did figure it out. He was like, oh crap, he's gonna come up the only ramp that he can come up on. Uh, up yeah. He sent the investors and then everything got vortexed. Um, and that was a weird vortex again because, you know, everything wasn't as close as in the other vortex and everything still got sucked in yeah. so that's a, that's a really big uh, win for vive here because no actually it's not he has to beat muscle like it's still the circle of life <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's still the circle of life <laughs> oh man all right this is getting this is a grind Who's gonna be able to take it? Yeah, holy guacamole. Is that a rider downer? Yeah, I think so. But Axel Toss is back. Yay! Up, yeah. Well, Axel wasn't there the whole time. Yeah. No wonder why the cast was much better. Whoa! Oh. Man are up! He was just lying <laughs> on his bed. Everyone in the chat was just like, wow, this cast is so good. And no one was saying that when you were there. You're right. Earlier. I think you're right. Ooh, we're pretty good, you and me. Yeah, we are. Not bad. <laughs>